Hi guys, it's Kath. Today, I'm going to show you how I built this miniature 1 to 12 scale barbecue grill. This grill has a lid that opens to reveal the grill top and doors that open to reveal accessories inside including a propane tank. I'll show you how I model, painted, assembled, and finished this grill. And by the end, you should be able to create your very own and even make customized changes to it. Let's get started. In Tinkercad, I open up a blank work surface. Let's start with the iconic curved lid. I take this light blue half cylinder and drop it on my work plane. Then grab an invisible cube and increase the size. Use that to cut away a third of the shade from one of the two curved sides. Make a copy of that invisible cube and use it to cut away a slice from the top of the half cylinder. This gives you the basic shape of the lid. I make a copy of it, turn it invisible, shrink it down, and place it on the underside of the original. Make sure it's centered and then combine the two shapes to cut away the interior of the lid. Here I'm just using cubes and cylinders to make cutaways on the sides. Now we're ready to add a handle. I grab an orange cylinder and make it long and thin. It should be just a bit shorter than the width of the lid. To attach the lid, I use shorter small cylinders. Lastly, make a copy of the small cylinder and rotate it a bit. Add it to the front center of the lid. This is where we'll add the thermometer at the end. Here is the grill lid printed out. I printed this on my filament printer using translucent white filament. If you don't want to paint your model, feel free to use a metallic silver filament instead. Next up are the grates on the grill top. We start with a red cube and stretch it out to a short rectangular prism. Make a copy and turn it invisible. Shrink it down a bit and place it in the center of the original. Combine the two shapes to cut out the area. Make another copy and place it in the center. Shorten the length of this one so there's more space left behind at the back. Cut this away and you're left with this shape. I grab an invisible cube and decrease the width so it's a thin panel. Use that to create the grates. I make copies of that panel until I fill out this entire space. Then combine the shapes and you'll see the grates come to life. Make a copy of these grates. Decrease the length so they're much shorter and place it at the top rack. Combine the shapes to cut this area away and your top rack has grates as well. Then I take a red cube, shrink the height and length so it's a thin stick. Place it on the bottom rack. Stretch it out so it covers the entire rack. Make a copy of it, place it towards the back, and your racks are done. And here it is printed out. These grates and the top lid clip together to swing open and shut smoothly. Let me show you how that mechanism works. On the grate itself, I take an invisible cylinder and stretch it out so it's a long, thin pole. I use that to cut holes in the back area of the grate on both sides. Then on the lid, I grab a blue sphere. Shrink it down so it's a tiny bead. I add that on the inside of the lid where it will meet the grates. Add a sphere on both sides. These spheres will clip into the holes that we cut on the grates. And here is how it works. Just use a little force to push these two pieces together until you hear them click into place. Super simple to do. After testing the fit, I take them apart to paint them. If you printed this in silver or black filament, you can skip this step. Since I printed in white, I go ahead and paint the grates in black. Then paint the interior of the lid with a metallic silver acrylic paint. For the exterior of the lid, I'll be using stainless steel contact paper. I first cut out a strip that's the same width as the lid. Then mark where I need to cut holes for the handle. I also mark where I need to cut out a hole for the thermometer. I punch that hole out with my crop dial. I punch out holes for the handlebar area as well. Then I cut a slit underneath the handlebar holes. These slits will allow me to slide the contact paper over the handle. This is a bit tricky and takes patience to get it just right. I 
I also cover the sides of the lid with more contact paper. I cut off the excess with a utility knife. Now it's time to fully assemble the lid area. A little tip here is to use a cotton swab and rubbing alcohol to remove the paint where the hinge is. That will allow for much smoother movement of the lid. Next, let's build the base for this grill area where the knobs and shelves will be. I grab a red cube and stretch it out so it's long. Flatten it so it's this long rectangle. Make a copy of that shape, shorten it, and make it a bit taller. Center the second shape below the long flat rectangle. Make another copy of the second shape. Shrink it down a bit and turn it invisible. I place it in the top center area and lower it down. Combine all the shapes so this creates an open cavity in the center. Next, I grab this green triangular prism. Make it thin and place it inside the cavity. Then make copies horizontally along this area to fill it out. I grab an invisible cube, make it big, and place it above these green triangles. Combine the invisible cube and the green triangles to cut away that sharp top point of the triangles. Take an invisible cylinder, shrink it down, and stretch it out so it's a long tube. Place that at the back of the green triangles and combine the shapes to create a cutout in each of these green areas. This is already starting to take shape. Then take another invisible cube and stretch it out over this cavity area. Make sure it's a bit wider than the cavity and lift it up so it's only touching the top area of the shape. Once you combine the shapes, you'll see that this created a little lip area for the grill grace to sit on top of. The knobs are just orange cylinders that I place along the front of the grill. I bevel the tops of the cylinders just a bit for the rounded shape. Next, I'll make some cutout areas on the side shelves. I take a red cube and place it on one of the side shelves. Make sure it's a bit smaller than the shelf itself. Make a copy of it and shrink it down. Place it at the center of the red cube and cut it out so you're left with the outline of a rectangle. Then I grab this light blue half cylinder shape. Shrink it down and rotate it 90 degrees upward. Place it at the center bottom of the rectangular outline. Lift the red rectangular outline up a bit so it's only touching the top area of the shelf. Combine the red outline with the gray shape and you'll see the cutout on the shelf. Turn the blue half cylinder invisible. Move it down through the shelf so it's cut to hole all the way through. Do the same for the other shelf. The grill lid and grates will be sitting on the top center of this cooktop base. This is the cooktop base all printed out. Again, if you printed this in silver filament, you can skip this painting step. Lastly, we need the cabinet base for the grill top to sit on. I take a red cube and stretch it out underneath the grill part that we already built. Make a copy, shrink it down, and turn it invisible. Center it inside the original shape and combine it to cut out a cavity in this base. I take another invisible cube, stretch it out so it's long and flat, and place it right underneath the top of this cabinet. Combine the shapes to cut out these holes on the sides. Next, we'll need some ventilation holes in this cabinet. Instead of using an oval, I combine two cylinders and one cube to make this rounded shape. Combine all of them and turn them invisible. Shrink it down. Increase the height and then rotate it 90 degrees. I place this on the side wall of the cabinet. Shrink it down a bit more and make copies horizontally across this wall. I do four across and four down. Make these longer so it stretches all the way to the other wall. Combine the shapes and you'll have your ventilation holes. I make another copy, place it a bit higher up on the cabinet and combine those shapes as well. I also make more copies to create ventilation holes at the back of the cabinet. Next up are the doors. I take a red cube and flatten it into a panel. Stretch it out so it's half the size of the opening in the cabinet. Then I take a blue sphere, shrink it down, and place it at the top and bottom edges on one side of the door. These will act as hinges. I make a copy of the sphere and turn it invisible. I use that to cut a rounded hole in the bottom of the cabinet for the hinges to sit in. This is the same technique that I use to create the hinges for the lid of the grill. For a handle, I take an orange cylinder, shrink it down, and rotate it 90 degrees. 
Stretch it out so it's long and place it at the top center of the door. Use small cylinders to attach the handle to the door. Make a copy of this door, invert it, and your cabinet is done. Once it's printed, the doors click into place. Then they can swing open and shut. I'll paint this entire cabinet silver. This is completely optional, but I wanted to add wheels to the bottom of this base cabinet. I make a flat rectangle the same length and width as the cabinet. For the wheels, I line up two orange cylinders and one blue half cylinder shapes in a row. I cut away a curved section from the blue shape and the wheel is done. Make a copy and place on each corner of this flat rectangle. The reason to add wheels to this panel instead of directly underneath the cabinet is just to make it easier to print. Once this piece is printed out, I can glue it to the bottom of the cabinet. I'll be using super glue because it works really well with PLA plastic. The glue I'm using also comes with this accelerator setting spray. Instead of spraying it though, I use a cotton swab to cover one of the surfaces. Then I squeeze super glue on the other surface. When these two surfaces are pushed together, that bond is instant and super strong. I do the same thing to glue on the grill top. At this point, I finish covering the front area around the knobs with more stainless steel contact paper. Then clip in the doors for the cabinet. The grill lid and the grates attach to the rest of the grill by adding glue around the bottom perimeter of the grates. Then place it at the top center of the grill. Let's go in for the finishing details. You can finish the side shelves with more stainless steel contact paper, but I chose to paint it with more metallic silver acrylic paints. I ended up adding a circle for a power knob, and I'm painting that in red here. Then punch out some small circles from stainless steel contact paper. Add a small circle to the top of each knob. For the wheels, I use some silver paint to accentuate the metal area and make it stand out from the black wheels. For the thermometer, I print out some images I found online and cut it out. Glue that to the circle that we made in the center of the lid. I use some UV gel on top of that image and cure it for the look of glass. Last but not least, I'll show you an optional accessory for this grill, a propane tank. The main structure of the tank is made with a cylinder. Then I take a half sphere shape and place it on top of the cylinder. I make a copy of this and put it on the underside of the cylinder as well. Use another orange cylinder to create a flat disc and place it at the bottom of the tank so you have a flat base. Next, I take another cylinder and place it at the top center. It's much smaller than the original cylinder and sticks out from the top. Make a copy of it and shrink that down. I use a smaller shape to cut out the center of the cylinder. Then I use an invisible cube to cut away the front part of this circle. Grab another orange cylinder and shrink it down. Place it at the top center of the tank. Make a copy. Increase the size a bit and flatten it into a disc on top of the center pole. Grab a blue half cylinder shape and rotate it so it's upside down. Shrink it down and stretch it out so it's long. Turn it invisible and use it to cut slits on the side of the top section. Super easy propane tank. I print this out in white and I cover the entire exterior with UV gel to give it a glossy finish. Add a few accessories and your barbecue grill is all done. 
Now you've seen exactly how I built this miniature barbecue grill. It's all complete and a perfect addition to any outdoor miniature scene. I hope you like this video and learned something new. As always, if you like any of the models that I create, I have them all listed on my Etsy shop. If you want to keep up with my smaller projects that don't make it to YouTube, check out my Instagram page. I'll see you next time. Bye.